I have horrible running form. Even though this picture is really blurry, you can see what a terrible heel strike I have. Suzanne, not that much better. She strikes with her heel as well. We're trying to fix it. We're doing a program called the Cool Impossible. And to do it, we need a wobble board and a slant board. This gear costs about $70 new. Uh, we made two sets for under $10, and we're gonna show you how we did it. Stick with us. Hi, and welcome to the Handyverse, where we approach home ownership mindfully, turn to DIY when we can, and our knowledge and skills allow it, and hopefully inspire you to do the same in your own living space. Today, we are doing something a little bit different. Uh, we are working on some exercise equipment that, uh, that we need for a program from a book called The Cool Impossible by Eric Orton. Eric Orton was the coach from the book Born to Run, if you've, uh, if you've read that. Anyway, he has a, a training program that he put together in his book, and it calls for some equipment. To buy the equipment that is in the book, it costs around $70. Uh, it seemed like a lot. It's probably worth it if you can't do it yourself, but it seemed like something that we might be able to do ourselves. So here we are today. We're going to put that together for you. So all we're going to need for this is some scrap plywood. And it's better to use plywood than boards because uh, plywood is actually stronger than a, a wood board. Got a lacrosse ball and some anti-slip carpet tape uh, that's to put on the surface so feet don't slip off it when you're doing your exercises. I'm going to be making two of these, uh, one for myself, one for Suzanne. We're going to go through the program together and the uh, first thing we got to do is I'm going to cut the surfaces out. So I need two circular surfaces for these, um, the wobble board and then two square surfaces for the for the uh, slant boards. So I'm going to cut those first and then we'll uh, move on to the next step. To cut this out I, I just found something in in the house that was the right size. I was looking for a five inch diameter ring and I just uh, traced it onto the plywood and then freehand cut it with the scroll saw to uh, to get the circle. Um, it's not it's not perfect, but uh, it's certainly good enough for this application. So if you have something similar, uh, take your hand at it and, and uh, see what you can come up with. Now that I have the discs, they didn't turn out that bad actually, I'm going to cut two five inch squares out of my scrap plywood. Okay, we've got our top surfaces. We're gonna set them aside for now. We're gonna route the edges in a minute, but uh, first we're gonna cut one more piece out of our scrap. We need a, a three and a half inch wide strip of wood um, for the support piece underneath and uh, leave it longer for now because we're gonna cut it on an angle later to create the slant. But um, really, I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna cut a three and a half inch strip out of it and then uh, prepare that for underneath. Okay, I've got the main pieces cut that I'm going to need. I also got the lacrosse ball cut and uh, I wasn't sure how this was going to work, but what I did was just, uh, I could see the line where the mold was on the lacrosse ball. So I just darkened that with a pencil and then I used that as a guide and I cut it with a hacksaw. And uh, I also used a coping saw, but uh, the hacksaw works. Uh, coping saw is a little bit faster and easier if you have one. So I'd recommend that, but if all you have is a hacksaw, just have at it with that. And these actually turned out quite well. It looks like they're going to make nice uh, bottoms for the stability ball or stability um, plates. The squares I ran through on the router to round the edges to make them smooth. We, there are going to be feet on these after all. And same with the discs. Um, I'm not going to get a job anywhere cutting out circles, but uh, these are, they're pretty close and good enough for this uh, this exercise. Uh, no pun intended. Now the next step is to do the bottom of the slant board 
and uh, I have the three and a half inch wide piece um, and what I did was I rounded the edges here uh, because it would be easier to run it uh, before I make the next cut uh, on the router and uh, so now I need to cut this at a 15 degree angle I don't know if that's what the official versions are uh, I don't have one to go off but it looks like it's about 15 degrees so that's what I'm gonna use and um, so I need to make a cut along here for 15 and then of course on the second one on this end so I've got this piece ready to go gonna do that next for this here I do want it about a quarter of an inch up on this end on the on the short side and so that's where I'm going to make my cut and you'll notice I haven't been doing precise measurements for any of these um, but sometimes you don't need to now this is going to go on the bottom of here to make the support and give us the angle that we need So with these holes set in the uh, top, I, uh, I countersunk them because um, you don't want these screw heads to be uh, impacting your feet on the board. Uh, so make sure those are flush. Um, now we're going to flip it over and simply glue and screw uh, all of this in place. And uh, there you have it. So I'm just gonna let this glue dry and uh, we'll have uh, a wobble board or slant board. And you can see the uh, the piece on the bottom, it's, it extends a bit beyond the, the base, which allows it to give that rocking motion to it, which uh, helps stabilize the muscles or strengthen the muscles, uh, stabilization muscles in your feet and legs. Now the last step for this guy is to put on some uh, grip tape. This is just, I picked this up at the dollar store. It's just, um, it's meant for going on uh, carpets or rugs. You just stick it to the back of your rug and it provides a grippy surface for the floor. 
um, but we're going to use it on the top of the board for our feet. One last thing, we're going to flip it over and we're going to put a strip on here to protect the floor. So with that epoxied on, uh, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the slant board and we're just going to put the um, carpet tape on this to uh, protect our feet. There you go, not the prettiest. You can pretty them up by painting them, staining them, varnishing, whatever you want to do. Uh, we just went with the raw wood. It works fine and uh, we're really happy with them. So far so good with the exercising. We also added uh, poles. We just got uh, broomstick poles from the dollar store uh, for $1.25 each. And instead of the ski poles that it calls for in the program, and so far so good with those as well. Maybe in a few months we'll uh, post some pics showing you how our running form has improved. Uh, we, we shall see. Uh, anyway, if you're interested in, in this at all, we recommend Eric Orton's channel. Uh, I'll put a link right here. And uh, you know, if you have a chance, read the book. Uh, I'd recommend a, a digital copy or a hard copy, not so much the audio because there's a lot of graphs in it, a lot of pictures, uh, things that you could, uh, that you need to help with the training program. Um, again, if you're interested in Eric Orton, the, the book Born to Run, that's probably a better audible uh, audiobook selection and we'll put a link to that down below too uh, to give you some background on why we get into this and, and who Eric Orton is. Anyway, if you like it, hit like, hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.